welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. South Africa's steel industry is being buffeted by cheap imports and weak demand, and companies in the sector are in serious distress. Terence Creamer joins me now to discuss some of the latest actions being taken in an effort to ensure survival. Terence, thanks for joining me. Awesome. Firstly, ArcelorMittal has added a couple of elements to its proposed survival plan. Can you elaborate? Yes, uh, they've br brought together the media and analysts last week to announce that they were going to add a rights issue, a 4.5 billion rand rights issue, to their survival plan. I think taking everyone a bit by surprise, 4.5 billion is bigger than market capitalization of the company, so it's a massive rights issue. So they need to go through a lot of shareholder processes to get that through the door. And uh, the other element that they went strongly on is that they're going to not only apply for the 10% uh, protection that they have been um, go under that processes have been underway through ITAC to, to receive, but they also said that they're going to be applying for anti-dumping and safeguard duties over and above those 10% uh, levels of protection. And uh, in some cases, they're talking about between 50 and 60% uh, additional tariff protection for certain grades of steel. So those were the two key uh, additional elements that uh, ArcelorMittal added to their survival plan. Obviously, the other companies in the sector and Haifeld still going through its business rescue process. And the, but, and, but both of those are saying that protection is one of the key elements for survival. And then, of course, uh, uh, ArcelorMittal is also engaged with government around a, a pricing plan, a fair pricing plan, because they are going to be a very much a monopoly provider. So if they, get, if they get protection and then go and just purely pass that on to the downstream industry, that's going to be a, a major problem for government and for, obviously, the, the, the companies that use steel. And they are also in distress. It's not just ArcelorMittal. So there's, there's a plan to try and mitigate that. Uh, that, that plan apparently has been tabled. It, uh, we, ha we haven't had sight of what the details are. But it's, in some ways, we understand it will, will cap the the um, the upside for for ArcelorMittal prices uh, if if an upcycle returns. The the, the, the last element um, that uh, ArcelorMittal also announced was a, a new pricing arrangement with um, Kumba Iron Ore. They've had a cost plus type arrangement that goes back to 2001. I mean, obviously there have been iterations because we had major court cases and legal battles around it, but they've moved from a cost plus arrangement to an export parity price arrangement which is going to save them some money in, in the short term and during the down cycle. The issue is, is that it won't be as advantageous to, uh, to the steel group when a up cycle returns to iron ore, which is also in a very depressed state. So there's a number of moving parts at the moment. There's uh, the protection, there's the pricing, uh, there's the mitigation strategies if they get the protection. And uh, these are all starting to seem to come together. Plus there's the elements that individual companies are having to take like rights issues or business rescue. Some of these components, however, such as increased protection, are not finding international favour. Not, not only not international favour, I think there will be some ob objection, but there will also be domestic uh, companies that are very nervous about this. Because if this uh, protection is merely passed on to the downstream consumer of steel, it's going to have a, a, a really negative effect on manufacturing in this country and the steel processing industry. And in fact, two re-rollers, so that take hot rolled quill mostly from ArcelorMittal uh, and process that further, one in the uh, in Saldana Bay right next door to Saldana Steel is Deferco, the other is Safal in KwaZulu-Natal. Uh, they do have imports as well, but they, they, they mostly buy from ArcelorMittal, saying even the 10% duty on hot rolled quill is going to be put major stress on, uh, uh, on their business. and. Uh, they feel a differentiated plan is necessary. If you're adding value, serious value, to steal that, that basic primary input, which is hot rolled quill, and they, what they do is they, they kneel, they pickle, they roll, they, they make it into a, a, a more finished product, they feel that that beneficiation needs to be recognized and they should not be subject to that 10% protection, otherwise it negates their value addition. So there is opposition there, but there's even broader opposition. We saw a group affiliated to NIASA, which is an employee, uh, employer body, uh, setting up a, a campaign to lobby for against uh, some of the protection being sought by, um, by ArcelorMittal and others, and especially nervous about the, the proposed uh, safeguard and anti-dumping duties, which would be a much bigger 
the sort of level of protection and the 10%. We're starting to see at the moment only on a few grades of steel, but soon we're going to have it on just about every grade that we produce in South Africa. There have also been some developments at Highfield Steel where the business rescue plan is hitting some turbulence. Yes, you know, this the company's been in business rescue since uh, April this year. Uh, it's not in operation. It's got a mining operation as well as a... Um, as well as steel making and uh, is also a vanadium producer. And uh, since April, really, operations have been curtailed. There's been an engagement with staff around, you know, not forced retrenchment, but, but seeing how, you know, the, through natural attrition, um, fewer staff are needed. And some people have taken the package. There's still quite a few, that's over 700 people that are considered redundant if the business rescue plan is successful. So the plan was published in September. The, it, was it was voted by creditors uh, in October as, uh, th with creditor support. That was a big milestone. But um, some, one of those creditors um, is uh, linked to Everaz Highfelt, Everaz, who is the, the Russian steel group who also and Vanadium group that also owned, um, uh, well, owns uh, Highfelt Steel. And they have, uh, they've objected to the creditor vote uh, they felt there wasn't enough um, uh, transparency around the, the debt burden. So what happened was very late in the day, a SARS uh, assessment was added to the overall debt, raising uh, creditor debt from about 1.2 or 1.6 billion to well over 2 billion. That, for, that gave SARS really the deciding vote. Uh, that's the South African Revenue Service, the deciding vote uh, to approve the, the business rescue plan. And I think Everest, the Everest link company, East Metals, was planning to vote against and probably would have had the deciding vote if it weren't for the change in that dynamic. So they've taken the, uh, that vote as well as the plan to court. Um, and we, uh, it's, it was initially a, just a, a normal court application. They've since added a urgent uh, process to try and interdict the business rescue practitioners from continuing with any of the actions that they ha are having to take to try and complete or consummate a deal which would result in the sale of the business to an, um, a Chinese company called uh, International Resources Limited, which Everaz feels doesn't really have the pedigree or the capacity to deliver and therefore puts the whole uh, pro process of rescue at risk and therefore are also objecting to that. That's going to go before the courts. We're gonna, it's going to be interesting. I think the court will hear the matter next week and we'll have to see if they uh, halt the business rescue practitioners from doing their work, what the next steps will be. So. As you can see, there's, there's the stress all around. It's not just the big uh, Arsenal Metals and uh, Highfelt Steels, but it's companies, the re-rollers and the fabricators. They're all in a difficult market. And I think the message that's coming through is that the steel industry isn't just those two big players. There are others here. And I think that when ITAC and government are approaching survival plans and rescue plans, they need to take account of the full value chain, not only the two big primary producers. Thank you, Terence. That's the Second Take Show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.